like it's not too soft. Because I want to turn these into YouTube videos. Oh, that makes it's sense. It's a thing. It's I a know. Thing. YouTube is a thing. Imagine that. Okay, perfect. She said it's really good. All right, let's okay. do this. Yes. Oh, my gosh. All right, Shalane, my love, thank you so much for being here and for persevering through all these tech issues. I kind of feel like, and I'm just going to, like, come, because we're just going deep in this interview. We're just mm -hmm. going to go straight, like, to it. Um, I felt like what was coming up for me then was like, you know, you need to fight for this. Like there's something that needs to come through here and it's really freaking important. And even though it's not easy and effortless, you actually just need to get your warrior on and fight for this. So mm. I'm just going to go ahead and give you a beautiful, big, beautiful intro. Oh. And um, we can just, we can just pray and pray that whatever wants to come through this morning is going to come through and it's just going to be divine and beautiful and amazing. So for those that haven't had the pleasure and the privilege of meeting Shalane yet, she is a freaking powerhouse of a woman. I've got her bio here that I'm just going to read out to you guys. Um, Shalane was born in Washington and she was homeschooled up until the age of 16 when she started college. She's a published <laughs> author. She started her first business when she was 15 years old. Um, she opened her first brick and mortar business, New Juice Bar, when she was just 18. Um, she, from there, learnt that how important it was to be surrounded by other like-minded entrepreneurs and so started a collective of entrepreneurs called Entrepreneur Before 25 and that's how we connected um, when I was interviewed on Shalane's podcast about a year ago now. Um, she's now running multiple successful businesses and I'd love you to give us a little bit more on Fulcrum and this new venture that you're going into before we dive straight in. Yeah, so Fulcrum <laughs> is what they're starting to do in the big cities essentially and just to give you guys some context, I live in Yakima, Washington. There's a little over 100,000 people here and there is definitely the stigma here that nothing good ever happens in Yakima. In fact, a lot of things that are good don't even get passed to happen here and just dream after dream is shut down. And so we're really trying to change the narrative on that and put together um, a project that is going to not only be a really successful business model, but also transform our cities and start with Yakima and expand from there. So essentially what the actual project is, is we have a 51,000 square foot building under agreement here in Yakima, right downtown. And at the nucleus of it, the DNA throughout the entire building is an entrepreneur innovation center. So entrepreneurs from all around the world will be able to apply to be part of this innovation center with their idea. And if they get past our vetting process, um, that, that center is going to be directly backed by venture capital, mentors, coaches to prove that their idea is going to actually go to market and be successful, hopefully. Uh, and then <laughs> in the same building, there's going to be a giant co-working space. Um, there's going to be uh, affordable living, um, so studio, one-bedroom apartments. There's going to be a restaurant, a uh, speakeasy type membership lounge, a coffee bar, and a gym and a few other things as well. So all in one space, you're going to essentially have this center for human flourishing where you can live, work and play with like-minded people. So that's called Fulcrum. Um, in the past, actually in November, I became the executive director and I'm also on the board um, and one of the family members of that. And so that has, is totally just like my journey in life has evolved me exactly to where I'm supposed to be. And I've definitely never been so fulfilled doing something in my life. So it's been Beautiful. exciting to watch unfold. So good, babe. So good. Could you take us back to the start of your entrepreneurial journey? Because I know you are one of five. Is that right? One of five and from a pretty entrepreneurial family. So is it something that's just in the blood? One of four, actually, just okay. for accuracy's sake. Um, yes, entrepreneurship definitely runs in my family. All of my siblings are entrepreneurial across the board in pretty much all the different industries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't even know what my older brother Kylan does. He sent me like Google Docs and PDF forms to explain it. And it's just like <laughs> next level, like... <laughs> technology stuff. Um, anyway, so from a young age, that's just kind of, you know, we were built to be creators. We were built to 
create value out of nothing and we were homeschooled and so that's really what everything was designed for um from a very young age i was taught the phrase if there's a problem you find a way to fix it better than anyone else and you might have something there you know so definitely runs in the blood yeah beautiful and i know one of the things that we both are super passionate about and wanted to talk about today is the culmination or, you know, the the crossroads between business and faith. So Mm. could you give me a little bit of a background on your faith journey and Mm. then we'll intertwine the two together? Yeah. Well, this could be a very long Facebook Live. Um, I was very much raised in the church and raised decently conservative. I won't go into it, but I I grew up Seventh-day Adventist, which is very conservative. Um, And it's just been an evolution of growth my whole life, um, evolving into a deeper relationship with God, you know, the creator, your your higher power. Um, And for me, it's been the foundation of of what I've built everything on. And it's especially been incredible the last couple of years, you know, getting into the business scene where you really have two ways of of doing things. Like you can um you can do whatever it takes and sacrifice who you are as an individual in order to meet your goals which we've all done that to a certain extent, right? Some get down that that path in the extremes farther than others, or we can stay true to our values, our our internal compass and our true north, and Mm. maybe reach the goals a little bit um, later than other people, but reach those goals and still have a healthy mind and soul and body to enjoy them. Um, and at a very young age, I mean, I'm, I'm still pretty young. Sometimes I don't feel like it, but um, I realized that the young entrepreneur movement, and this was about three and a half years ago, um, was going to completely implode on itself in about 10 years. I got like this vision of a bunch of young entrepreneurs who had reached their goals, like they're sitting on their yacht, right? Um, they've got all the money in the world, but they have no health to enjoy it. They've completely lost who they are. And they also don't have anyone around them to enjoy it with because they sacrificed themselves for their dream. And that's why I started the podcast, um, Entrepreneur Before 25, where I would start interviewing people and specifically ask them the question, how do you balance work and life? And what I didn't realize is the podcast was taking me on a journey of evolution in the concept of balance. And now, if I were to do the podcast over again, I would ask, how do you integrate the areas of your life to the most fulfillment for you in that season? Or something Mm. along those questions. Um, Because what season I'm in right now is I want to live a fully integrated life where I am so aligned and in flow with who I am as an individual. Um, I know myself, I know where I'm headed, I know my boundaries, I know my growth and my vision as an individual, that just me living in that state attracts and repels everything in the way it's supposed to be. And I know that sounds wishy-washy. If you said that to me three years ago, I'd be like, (laughs) yeah, right, like that. You're an insane person, but I've been on this incredible journey of really making the hard decisions Mm -hmm. um, and choices and saying no and saying yes to things that scare the crap out of me um, and not limiting myself and and really all while keeping that focal point um, in place. And it's been incredible to watch just things unfold more and more. And so for me, you ask, how does faith integrate into it all? And for me, I think spirituality and your faith is, regardless of what you believe, it's such a huge component of who we are as an individual. And I think what a lot of people need to be reminded of, and I needed to be reminded of this, is 
if you're having a relation, if you're having a relationship with someone on earth, they can be a good friend, a significant other. If your relationship isn't growing and evolving with that person, if you aren't having continual experiences in that relationship, your relationship isn't growing. So it's dying or it's stagnant, or you're just in a constant, you're constantly in the same place with it. And we have the opposite view of our relationship with God or your higher power, whatever you choose to call the creator, right? Um, And a lot of people, and I know I did, didn't even question a lot of things and didn't even look into a lot of things or seek out different ways to experience God. Um, I think we limit we limit God a lot through that. Yeah. Um, and so as soon as I started, started adopting, okay, what would it look like to continue to actually grow my relationship with God? Um, that really unlocked so much and gives you so much of a deeper understanding of like the capacity you can have. And it really changes everything. So for me, it's not about the balance anymore. It's about the integration. How can I integrate Um, the things that fulfill me into everyday life and how can I correct and correct and correct every day to where that aligns more and more as time goes on. Wow. Wow. So good. So good, babe. Can you talk a little bit about or tell us a little bit about your relationship with God? What does it look like? Oh, that's a deep question. I think that my relationship with God is very personal. I mean, I grew up as a worship leader, um, I still love to lead worship, but I guess a very public relationship with God. Um, and I'm definitely in the season right now where um, I, it's a very like close, intimate connection. Um, and for me, what that actually looks like is, you know, I set aside time every morning to really um, separate the rest of the day. And I have a a morning routine where I meditate and I journal um, and I read the Bible and I really just set aside space to build that relationship. Um, And the way God has spoken to me over the years has changed over and over um, and evolved And I used to think that, you know, good believers were only the people who went to church. Um, And, you know, you'd look at people who didn't go to church. We've all been, we've all been here. Yeah. You'd look at the people who didn't go to church and be like, well, (laughs) and now (laughs) I'm definitely that person that doesn't go to church. (laughs) Um, And, you know, for me, for me, I need, for me, church needs to be a spiritually fulfilling place surrounded by people who fulfill me. Um, I view my businesses and everything I do as building God's kingdom, right? And so for me, I serve every day throughout the week. And so for me on the weekends, like I need to be doing stuff that spiritually fulfills me. And that can be hanging out with my family who fulfills me or going on a hike or I just, I set aside tremendous space. I um, grew up Seventh-day Adventist and Seventh-day Adventist believe to take a Sabbath. Essentially, they believe um, that Jesus rested on the seventh day. And so on that day, they strictly, you know, they don't do anything um, that feels like work, right? They have a very, there's a bunch of rules behind the way they do it. But for me, my Sabbath that I've consistently taken um, every week, barely miss a week. Cause I think it's what keeps me alive. Um, I take mm. a Sabbath and I don't do anything that feels like work. And I take that space. I'll delete my apps on my phone for social media and, and anything work related. Um, and that's my unplugged day to just really reconnect and get grounded, um, in who I am and what fulfills me and what I mm. believe. So, That's what it looks like a lot of things. Like once again, it's a totally like it's totally integrated in my life. So when people ask me that question, I find it a bit difficult 
um, to answer because it's not just, well, I go to church and I lead a youth <laughs> group and I serve the homeless. Like it's not, yeah. it's not that for me. It's very, very different than I think the yeah. natural flow is these days. Yeah. I just wanted to thank you, I think, for giving us permission because I think as young entrepreneurs or just young people in general, like millennials, we're both millennials. And I think there's this sort of mentality that if you're not sacrificing your mental health, if you're not, you know, losing sleep, if you're not working 18 hour days, seven days a week, then you don't want it bad enough or you're not working hard enough and therefore you'll never be successful. So I loved what you said before about really prioritizing your faith and making sure that you set apart that time in the day and knowing that we haven't really made it unless we've made it with our health intact with our relationships intact, with our family around us, with people that we can share our success with. Like to me, that's what making it is. And I love that you touched on that as well. That's beautiful. Um, how has having that faith practice and that really, I love that you talked about integrated faith. How has that strengthened your business or how has that helped you grow in your business? Do you have any really epic like God stories that you can share with us? Or how have you seen like God's hand and your faith really like, I guess, see your business flourish? Mm. Well, I think if, if my core belief about God comes down to anything, um, it's that God is love. And so if we really look at it that way, that strips away all, all religion, all rules, all guidelines, not saying those things don't matter or have value, but I think that that is the main message of God. Um, and so for me, that's what it comes down to in, in my businesses, in how I, um, what type of atmosphere I cultivate for people, mm. um, how I treat my employees, like how can, how can you, and it is, a, it's such a struggle. Like, as I'm saying this, it's, it's so much easier said than done to really embody that. And that's why I think it starts with ourselves. Like we have to respect and love and trust ourselves before we can even begin, I think, to have like a relationship with God and understand God even a tiny bit. Um, and I know that's a bit controversial. I do think it's a two-way street and it can happen at the same time. But um, mm -hmm. I can tell you that as I've built a better relationship with myself and started treating myself better, um, mm -hmm. I've had a way better quality of life. So it starts with you. Um, what practices are you doing to make that happen? Um, are you really looking in the mirror and telling yourself the truth about really difficult things? Like, are you... Yeah asking the hard questions? Are you doing the hard thing? Are you chasing the uncomfortable aspects in life? Because if we're chasing the comfort, you're not going to go anywhere in life. And I love to have everything together and I love to have all my ducks in a row and understand what's going on. But like, if I did that, I would not, I would not grow. I would not even be, I don't know what I'd be doing, but I would not be here. That's for sure. Um, so for me, it's, it's a practice of asking myself every day, like, how can I be a better version of myself today than I was yesterday? And also how can I really embody, um, as pure of a form of love in every situation that I can. Mm. And so for me, it's not about bringing people to church or converting them or getting them to believe one way or another, but helping people experience what I think is, is heaven on earth. Like I mm. think that's God's kingdom on earth is when we're really loving each other, which sometimes isn't even comfortable to be loved. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it can be embodied in many ways, but that's definitely a big, big goal of mine. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I think I just want to like honor how much success, like worldly success you've actually experienced because as much as, you know, we can talk about the failures and we can talk about the whatever, like God has really used you and lifted you up into positions of leadership throughout your community, throughout your family, throughout your whole world. And 
especially in our generation as well. And I can only see that growing bigger and bigger for you. So I just wanted to honor you in that. And guys, go and check out Shalane's website, check out her work, check out what she's like, the medicine that she's bringing to the world through her work. It's freaking phenomenal. And she's, yeah, absolutely changing the game for so many of us and for our generation. Last question before we wrap up, and I'd love to hear um, your take on this. I know we wanted to chat about a few different things here, but I'm just so mindful of time and your schedule. What do you see? (laughs) What's your vision for our generation? Like one of the intentions I have for this, I guess this series is to really be having conversations that are at the leading edge of consciousness. And what's the vision that you have? Like what is our generation specifically here to do? Um, You said the vision before about seeing us really succeeding in the business world and wanting to make sure that we're integrated in all areas. What's the vision that you have for our generation specifically? What are we here to do? Mm. I think we're here to take extreme ownership of our lives and evolve to a higher standard of greatness every single day. And I think even those two things could be completely game-changing and shift the course of this world. Because if you truly understand that you are where you are because of the decisions you've made or let other people make for you, and that if that's true, which I believe it is, then you have the ability to change whatever situation you find yourself in. And you have the ability Mm -hmm. to chase what fulfills you. And you have the ability to remove yourself from that friend group that you feel like is draining the life out of you and you have the ability to transform your financial situation and you have the ability to build the life of your dreams. And the great thing about business and one of my main reasons I love business and entrepreneurship and you know creating is that the most successful businesses are only successful because they provide an immense amount of value to the world. Therefore, if you get those components right and business is the route you choose and entrepreneurship is the route you choose, then it becomes a race with yourself on how much value can I bring to the table, which starts with yourself, which starts with the extreme ownership and the correcting and aligning more and more every day. And so I'm only 22. I (laughs) consider that I have, I have very limited life experience compared to what I'm going to have the rest of my life. I want to live a very long time. But what I've learned so far is the power of seeing that compounded effect is very, very hard to miss. And you can look at the people around you and you can see who's really, really taking extreme ownership of their lives versus who's making excuses and just sitting in complacence. So that would be my message on a billboard (laughs) to my generation. Wow. Wow. So good. So good. Is there anything else that you feel like wants to come through for this conversation? I think that the only person stopping us is ourselves. And I know these are such cliche phrases. Like I used to just listen to interviews and being like, oh my gosh, seriously, are we saying this again? (laughs) But they're, you know, the people saying them are super successful. And you look at, you study the lives of super successful people, which I think is a super valuable prop, like, thing to do and they don't make excuses um they don't beat themselves up either at least the successful people I want to be like uh but they operate life with grace and um continual improvement and they really surround themselves by people who are going to cheer them on um and 
one thing I did want to mention along with this um, is some of the most successful people in the world, their number one piece of advice is that they said no way more than they said yes. Warren Buffett actually said he says no 99% of the time. One of the richest men in the world who has the same 24 hours in his day as we have in ours. And that means what could we be in 30, 50 years, right? If we really practice that. And that's something I've really started to be unapologetic about, have yeah. my three top priorities and say no to as many things as possible. Um, things that I can't say no to, try to outsource. Uh, and this is very difficult for me because I'm a doer and it's hard to not get stuck in the complex of I can do things better than anyone else can. But it's those, what are those three priorities that only you can lead? Like they're individual to you and what's going to move the bottom line of your goals closer. So make the three things based off of those things and say no to anything that doesn't push those forward. And so that is a practice that I invite you all to join me. <laughs> it's very, it's very difficult, but you start to see the compounding effect. Uh, I've had to make some really hard decisions the last couple of months and some really unpopular ones. And you get to this moment where it's like, I made a commitment to myself that I wasn't going to do this. So got to do the hard thing. Like there's a tangible moment where you can backslide or you can continue to move yeah. forward. And I, it's always worth it to move forward, even if it's extremely uncomfortable. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. I'm feeling like you're speaking to my soul. So much of what you're saying, I'm like, I'm literally going to go back and rewatch this a million times. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much. I'm feeling like we, yeah, this is coming to an end now. And I just wanted to honor you and lift you up. And I feel like you know, when you fully surrender and just give your life over and say, you know what, God, use me in the service of others. Use me. How would you have me, you know, you've given me these gifts. Now I'm giving them back to you. Use me. And I'm just fully surrendered. And um, I think that's what you've done and what you're doing. And that's what we're doing. And it's just having these conversations. There's so many spinoffs that we could go through from here into things like meritocracy and privilege and faith. And, and there's so many different, you know, things that we could chat about from here, but that'll just have to be part two. But I just wanted to we honor can do you. part two. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to honor you, my love. And I'm going to put you guys, I'm going to put all of Shalane's details in the comments below. Um, so you guys can get in touch with her. You can follow her on social media and just get her in your orbit and be radically, insanely inspired by her work. But thank you so much, my beautiful. It's such an honor to walk this life with you and to have you as, you know, a girlfriend and as, you know, someone that I look up to, but as also someone that I'm just, you know, constantly insanely inspired by. So thanks for loving me and thanks for letting me love you. And just thanks for doing life with me. Thank you. This is so much fun. I'm extremely honored that um, you asked me to do this and mm -hmm. If anything, we got to catch up a bit. So <laughs> I love the work you're doing, your authenticity and realness and just commitment to showing up every day really inspires me. And I'm cheering you on. So oh, always, thank you. always, honey girl. I love you guts. All right. I'll talk to you really soon, my love. Thanks, Bye. you guys. Bye, chickens.